future. Handsome, industrious men. Well. Sticky. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now you're, you're, you're just guessing right there. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty safe bet. Like, I've got a human body, Leon. I know. I do. It gets sticky. Wait, what's going on? I just missed the entire beginning of that. Uh, I, in, I intimated that you and Leon might be sticky. <laughs> For similar reasons, or just separately, to just happen to be sticky? Separate reasons. I was I was just telling him that I, too, have a human body. It, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort for the human body to get sticky. I guess that's true. <laughs> so, I'm just, I'm just playing the, uh, I'm, I'm playing the odds here, guys. The- neither, <laughs> notice that neither one of you has denied to yeah. being sticky. No, I, I can't really deny, I mean, it'd be hard to prove, I mean, you can <laughs> see me, so you're gonna have to take my word for it. At present, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not not sticky, but, I mean, I'm, I'm mostly dry. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Word Funk. I am the indispensable Leon Thomas. With me is the inexhaustible Johnny Maloney. And rounding us out, as always, is the inconsequential Austin Yorsky. Guys, how are you? Apparently I'm inconsequential. Now my feelings are hurt. (laughs) Yeah. Indisputably. Irrevocably. (laughs) Okay, guys. (laughs) I have nothing more. (laughs) Um, Internally? No. Uh, now we're back on the sticky again. Oh, God. Um, so, uh, a lot of great things have happened uh, this week. Um, none that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about stupid things. Um, Austin, you have this uh, very interesting uh, video game uh, news bit that you'd like to discuss. And, and me, you know, getting back into games and all that, I am intrigued. So, tell, us, tell us about it. Don't patronize me, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, it's so interesting. I didn't even read that link you sent me, you <laughs> dick. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly talk about, uh, I'm sure everybody knows, everybody who cares about video games is aware of the video game that's coming up called Destiny by the makers of Halo and the publishers of Call of Duty. So they're banking on it being the next big thing. Uh, they ap- apparently came out like today, yesterday, that they spent $500 million developing and promoting it. Can anybody else even get their mind around that figure? Five hundred million dollars. It's a bit what? excessive. A bit. Just a tiny bit excessive. I mean, um, you could have used that to maybe cure a major disease. Um, but they were like, no, no, video game. One video game. <laughs> how much, like, how much, I was only checking, okay, the um, the movie Avatar, you know, the James Cameron movie, yeah. apparently official budget was $237 million. like, a little bit over, no, not even half of that. That's By comparison, that's like pocket change. I can't even, like, they're not, they're never going to make that back, right? Does, are we in any delusions that they're going to make that money back in the first well, installment? Only by, oh, well, the first installment, no. Only, only by pl- proliferation. When they already have all the the assets and the tech and everything already up, and they have the the groundwork for the PR campaign. Microtransactions, son. <laughs> it all you need, all you need, is five billion people spending a dime on a haircut. Well, what they said is like, oh, you know, GTA Five made two billion dollars or whatever, like in the first month, and it's like, yeah, but Grand Theft Auto's had decades. To be in the public consciousness, everyone knows what Grand Theft Auto is. Yeah, yeah. Yes. if you don't play video games, you've probably heard the term of Grand Theft Auto uh, as it as it as it pertains to video games. So I I I I'm just learning about Destiny as we speak. <laughs> so. That's how you can tell the marketing was effective. Oh yeah. Also, yeah. What that what I can't even think of a more generic name than Destiny. That sounds like the project like prototype code name. Like the Nintendo Dolphin. Project, Project Destiny? Yeah. I guess I just couldn't think of anything better, because it just looks like Borderlands. With well, the, apparently they didn't spend any of that 500 million departments on a branding group. Yeah, I think they're just they're just hoping that if you see the box in the store and it says, from the makers of Halo and Call of Duty, you go, I could shoot some dudes, and then you just buy it. Destiny sounds like the name that a teen mom gives her kid. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but I, I just going back to the topic, me and Johnny, we've talked about before about the biggest problem facing the video game industry is the bloated budgets, the complete and total lack of like any restraint and that it's putting too much pressure on them to do all these kind of like crazy like DLC things and the cutout content. And I was just curious if you guys was this like is this as bad as it gets, five hundred million for an untested IP? I don't think it's as bad as it gets. Um, it could get potentially much worse in the future, but it's certainly as bad as it's been. Are Are you even interested in this game? Are you planning on? It's not even being for. It's not even come out for PC. There, apparently, time. the guys at the guys at Bungie have said that that basically um, taking on the development of PC because there it's like it's coming out for the PS4, it's coming out for the Xbone, it's coming out for the Xbox 360, it's coming out for the PS3, like it's it's coming out for every system under the sun. And they were like, yeah, it was just too much for us to take on like a fifth or sixth. They could, just release, they could just release a broken version and let Durante from Dark Souls fix it. He would, yeah, he would probably do that. You know, That's in in terms of um, budgets for things going up. I mean, it, it certainly has happened with uh, video games. And if if you're asking, uh, is it going to get higher in the future? I would have to say yes, because and because when um, in 1999. I'm just going to pull this out of my butt here. Um, <laughs> in 19- At least it'll be warm. Yeah. In 1999, um, I'm just going to switch to movies here because it's, it's sort of related. Um, uh, the Phantom Menace came out, and it had a budget of, um, I think, like $115 million. And that, at the time, was unheard of. It was insane to have a budget uh, of that uh, size. And that's not, I don't even think that's taking into like marketing, which had to be a lot more, but mm-hmm. it, it, it made its money back at, and then some many times over. And since then, the budgets have gone higher and higher. And, uh, you know, last year, um, Pacific Rim came out and it was $200 million and a bunch of other movies have been like 200 million. So if, if you're, if you're wondering if, if is $500 million the, the ceiling, for video games, I would have to say, like history has shown us, if you know, if if video games keep trying to mimic the mimic Hollywood, which they sort of have, then uh, the, the down the road there is going to be something five hundred fifty million dollar video game or six hundred million dollar video game. And by the way, um, while we're uh, talking about this, um, what are they buying? What what costs them? I'm not even joking. That's not it's, sort of it's manpower. It it takes it takes way more people, like a, a a larger amount of people, to make a video game than it does to make a movie. <laughs> they have like a whole floor of a building just dedicated to people modeling guns. Just they even, entire, yeah, I mean, a it's, cubicle they got farm. Five hundred people currently working on Destiny in on Bungie alone. That probably doesn't have to do with, like, there's probably people that are working back at Activision that are doing localization. There are probably, like, QA testers at Activision. That There's probably, like, you know, there's going to be marketing firms. There's going to be branding firms. There's going to be, like, like that's that's 500 people. Here's the thing. Um, in the development studio alone. Here, here's what's concerning about all of this. If it, um... There, there's almost, in a way, for the industry, at least, you know, maybe in my, my paranoia, at least in terms of the industry, there's almost no win here. Because if it fails, then that's horrible because you spent $500 million on something that didn't really make its money back or didn't make as much money as you had hoped. But if it succeeds, then that might be the standard. And Companies are going to be taking these huge risks because if they say, "Well, well, this uh, this Destiny game it costs five hundred million, but look, it made uh, two billion. It made two billion. So, so oh my God, we all have to make our AAA titles uh, th- with this amount of, with this budget, with this amount of effort and manpower." Am, well, I I mean, jump, am I jumping the gun here, saying though that it doesn't really look that good? No, I was about to say that. It, to me, it just looks like a less interesting Borderlands. It's a it's a shooter with like lots of gun customizations and a kind of unconventional art style. I've seen it. I've played it. Like it's not. It's whatever. I'm so, looking. I'm looking at screenshots now as we speak. And um, oh god damn it! All these screenshots are like are they're not even the gameplay footage. They're just. They're just the, they're the, the mock-up stuff and, and, and wallpaper bullshit. Oh, wait, wait here's, here's, <laughs> here's, 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 a screen, here's an actual screenshot, or at least what purports to be. Um, mm-hmm. Sure looks like a first-person shooter. <laughs> yeah, if you told me those were Halo, I wouldn't, like, 
dispute it. I'd be like, oh, really? Is that the new Halo? This just looks like an, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's pretty, but that's true of almost anything now. Yeah, that's not that's not really uh, anything to brag about nowadays. Is is there some is there something in this game besides its uh, appearance that makes it stand out? I mean, I mean, is there like this amazing new feature that everyone's uh, all jacked up about, or, or what? No, but they really love to use new words to describe old ideas. What would you mean? Like, you know, instead of multiplayer, they like to say, it's an interconnectivity game. <laughs> yeah, it's basically an MMO, but they, they keep trying to not use the phrase MMO. They're like, it's just lots of multiplayer. It's a big multiplayer-like game. It's like, it's an MMO, guys. Oh, my goodness. So, what... what I don't understand the appeal then. I don't understand the risk. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this now, and, and for all I know, like the day after it, comes out, it makes its money back. So it's not like I'm an analyst uh, in terms of video game, uh, the industry. Um, but it just, I, I guess I don't get it is what I'm trying to yeah. say. Yeah. I mean, I'm the asshole said the Wii would never catch on. So what do I know? It did all right for itself. <laughs> the Wii made all the money. But I mean, apparently. This is- Apparently they're they're in contract too. Bungie's in contract to have like mm-hmm. four games published over like the next decade. Yeah, so we're gonna see Destiny two, three, and four, whether we like it or not. Hmm. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense because how can you? I mean, I, are they are they stuck with this? I mean, what if it fails? <laughs> what if it fails? Does does Destiny two have to be six hundred million dollars? Hey, when has that ever stopped Activision? They're still Activision. making Tony Hawks. Oh. They're probably still if if it fails, they're probably gonna have to buy Bungie out. Right, and that sounds that, 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 sounds, that sounds like another huge risk. This just seems like just a, a, a massive roll of the dice. Bear in mind that we are talking about a company that is worth so much money that the company that owns it can't even sell it to anyone because no one can afford it. Yeah, Activision Blizzard is Act- basically its own yeah. country. I'm I'm point. surprised that they don't have their own currency. <laughs> Blizz bucks. Yeah. I just think it's strange, because when you look around, what are the most profitable games right now? It's like Minecraft, Angry Birds, shit like that. Like, there are very few AAA that are worth this kind of risk, it seems like to me. It seems like we should be moving away from these gargantuan, unwieldy budgets, but whatever. Yeah, Minecraft looks like someone made it during their coffee break. So, so. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> yeah, about you and Minecraft. Yeah, I genuinely hate it. Um, but no, you're, but no, I, I will say this for Minecraft. It was made for very little money, and it made a whole lot of money. I mean, that's that's an incredible uh, profit, you know, and the percentage of uh, profits there. But I, I don't know. Again, again, I, I we we say all this, and for all we know, it'll be a, such a hugely successful game that the price will uh, that they they put into it will be justified. But it's also just a little bit frightening because, like I said, you know, if, if this game su- succeeds, then they might be creating a new um, landmark, a, a new um, a goal for for AAA video games to to spend this kind of money and put in this kind of manpower. Hey, if every AAA studio wants to get in a race to the cliff, <laughs> they can we'll, they can go right ahead and do that. I mean, we'll, that's we'll set up we'll set up hurdles right on the, the edge. I have so many like last generation PlayStation Three games to to finish right now that if video games died off tomorrow, I'd be fine for years. I'm gonna take forever playing Tales of Graces F. <laughs> yeah, John, have you seen Johnny's Steam library? No, 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 what's up? What, what, what is it? <laughs> His grandchildren won't even be able to have to buy their own game. Oh. It's ridiculous. Well, Probably, it's it's pretty excessive. When those Steam sales pop up, it's hard to say no to like a dollar ninety nine for something that used to usually cost like forty dollars or something. It, it really is, you know. Like even if you're like, wow, I hear this game is terrible, but it is only three dollars. <laughs> I mean, Although, to a to a point, you know. Yeah, I was just three dollars is still way too much money to spend on aliens, colonial marines. <laughs> Johnny and I are notorious for filleting steam at every given opportunity, but their their storefronts become an atrocious mess recently. Greenlight is filling the thing up with trash. Not even Greenlight, but like free to play games that release with um, all the microtransaction DLC that you can buy. Mm, this yeah. package, this package, this package, this package, this package. I just don't want to come off like I'm not acknowledging that 
glaring flaw. No, it's it's, and I mean, I know that, that they want to move away from Greenlight. They want to get Steam to become a self-publishing uh, platform, and I I, th- I get the impression it's going to be even worse. Then I, I mean, you know, for like I think the second time in all history they pulled a game out of the store again today or yesterday or something like that, like Earth twenty sixty sixty seven or something or yeah, I saw that yeah for misrepresentation, and the guy was using, like, art assets that didn't belong to him, and the game was, like, broken, and there was video footage of it that wasn't even video footage of the game, and just, like, yeah, it's 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 going to get worse. they got to do something to make that a more manageable space. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm done talking about video games. Sorry, Leon. <laughs> no, I, I, I do like the video game, you know. I'm 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 back. Uh, Johnny, talk about drugs. Well, I, would, I, would, I would love to, Leon, except the, the new story that we've selected to speak about really has nothing to do with drugs. <laughs> because nobody, nobody is coming home from high school, and their parents aren't rifling through their bag, pulling, you know, lip balm out of their purses, and being like, where did you get this? How did you learn how to do this? And a kid, like, crying, being like, I learned it from you! Because, I mean, you know, there there are certain, I think, um, milestones, signposts on the road through civilization that possibly indicate that we are destined for total doom and absolute failure. This this might be one of them. Um, I'm talking about, and I, I shit you not, I'm having real trouble actually saying this with a straight face. The practice is called... Beezin. <laughs> Just the name. Just it's, the name alone. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, I, like, it's, it's, <sighs> apparently, this is, this is like a new trend, uh, a new teenage trend. I mean, I don't know what that means, you know, because <laughs> one alarmist, like, news story would be like, fucking bath salts, right? Um, yeah, then, I, I was waiting until you explained it before I get into that. Yeah, uh, uh, but, but yeah, okay, so apparently there's, there's a, a growing tendency, um, for young people to start applying a, a certain brand of lip balm onto their eyelids. Um, because of the peppermint oil in it apparently gets absorbed into the skin and, um, I, like, I, I don't even want to use the word high. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, when I was a teenager, when I was a teenager, um, it was as easy as trying to get somebody to boot at the liquor store for you. If you're, like, if you're resorting to rubbing lip balm on your eyelids, and you non-ironically call it beezin, I, like, I can't even begin to describe how stupid that is. Doesn't it like, seem how, like... How ev- desperate, how utterly desperate... Doesn't it seem like every couple of years is another quote unquote like trend sweeping the nation about people trying to get high? I feel like I've, I read these stories all the time. There's like some bullshit people make up and it never turns out to be true. Or it's like one dickhead on YouTube who filmed yeah. himself doing something really stupid. Like I, I didn't actually, I skimmed the article you sent me. Like how many actual cases do we have of people applying lip balm to their eyes? Not, it can't, very, not very many, I hope. Like I'm desperately hoping for the the dignity of humanity that it's not true. I can't, it can't be worth it. <laughs> well, I, I, it's certainly not. If 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 it creates a mild high, I guess the uh, the upside to this. God, I can't. I'm sorry I had to say it like that. But I guess the ups, the upside to this is that it's over the counter and easily obtained rather than um, something you have to get in an alley or however. It, <laughs> Or however it is people actually get drugs. Oh, you say that now, Leon, but you wait until we have the first bees and overdose in American culture. I mean, he was he was too young, but good God, his eyelids were moist and supple. Bees <laughs> and overdose involves someone just throwing up honey all over the place. <laughs> How hard up for drugs do you have to be? I don't know where about where you guys are from, but it's not that hard to get illicit substances. Yeah, I, I, I live in Baltimore, and... Uh, <laughs> you can accidentally score some I, fucking I, 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 I was about to say that. I'm not even joking. 
I I'm I don't have to go. I mean, all right. First of all, number one, if you're anyone listening, I've never done drugs in my life. I'm I'm a complete teetotaling, never had a drink of alcohol, never done drugs kind of person. But it is it's not for it's not because I have never found out where they are. Like, I don't know where the drugs are. I live in Baltimore. I live in a bunch of places, but right now, um, one of the places I lived was um, in North Las Vegas. So, basically, I've lived in a bunch of places where you'd think there'd be a lot of drugs. And where I live right now, I routinely walk up and down the street, and people sometimes walk past me and say, hey, I got this, I got this, I got this. And and then they walk past me, and I say nothing because I have nothing to say to these people. Um, but but the point is, people very uh, discreetly but politely uh, offer me drugs from time to time. So with this in mind, I don't feel like it's too difficult to obtain drugs if one is really really interested in finding it. So I don't understand the need for this for over the counter highs like um, like cough medicine. And bison and, and things of that of that nature. Maybe maybe I, it's just because I live in a big city um, that is known for its drug problem. But I, I just don't understand why people have to resort to these sorts of things. It might not even now that I think about it, it might not even be like a supply and demand thing. Like you know all those rappers who are dying from Sizzurp. Do you guys remember Sizzurp? I, I, ah, purple drink. Yeah, drink. <laughs> Like that's we you have to say it like not, that, Leon. You do. I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. That it actually like, that's that's a, that's a synonym for for syrup is purple drank. You can Google purple drank and it will take you. Like I'm I'm, I'm printing it in right now. Purple drank. Purple drank is a slang term for a concoction which includes prescription strength. Like it's it's you know it's right there. It's the first hit. I was just saying. Slang terms including scissorp, lean, syrup, drank, bar, purple jelly, Texas tea, and sikuni. Wait, I haven't heard. It's, it's honestly called Texas tea. I, apparently. You can't, you can't give a, a slang name to something that's already a slang name for something else. That's, that's too confusing. That's blame, not, that's blame not the most little of, Wayne. Blame little Wayne. Okay, well that's not the most offensive part of Scissor, but I'm just saying that that's ridiculous. <laughs> My point was that they could clearly afford better drugs, and they chose that for some reason. So maybe that's one of these things where it's like they're just bored of regular alcohol and weed, and they're just like, let's do something wacky. Maybe, There's maybe probably. Like, Sorry, go ahead, Ian. Oh, I was just saying, maybe it's it's like a trend-setting thing. Like, someone wants to find out what the new high is so that they, they can take credit for it. And, you know, basically, it's it's like the real world, world version of saying first. <laughs> I... All I can say is is that there's probably a reason why um, all the pictures that I've seen on, like, news sites and, and social media and things like that show... Um, really dorky looking white boys who think they're way cooler than they actually are. So I apologize on behalf of white people. <laughs> I feel like I had to take that one for the team. <laughs> it's got to be somebody, right? <laughs> I, I really, 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 really hope that nobody listening to this podcast is like, I'm going to try this. Ugh, God, I, I was spreading it. Because that's just don't, don't. We need that. We need that disclaimer from the BT podcast. Nothing said on the show reflects the views of anyone on it. <laughs> uh, uh, All right, guys. Do you want to? You want to talk about something way more fun and way more uplifting about uh, the, the, about humanity? I don't even. I don't. I don't want to talk about bees anymore. So <laughs> okay. Well, well, guys. Before the show. I, I, I was I, I just was thinking about something, and it occurred to me that although some shows that go on forever, like The Simpsons, you know, I, I certainly have their place in our society and in the in the consciousness of our generations. But you know what's really great? A show that only lasts like one or two seasons that everyone forgets about, but it's always awesome. And you think back on it, and you say, I, and you, and, and, and this happened to me the other day, and I'm, I'm not just saying this to, 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 um, drive home this point. This really happened. For some reason, apropos of nothing, I was just driving around, 
And although I had not thought about this show in approximately 20 years, it just popped into my head. And I said, I remember there was a show called Mantis. And it was on Fox. And it was about this doctor. Um, I can't remember his name, but that doesn't matter. There was this doctor, and he was shot in the spine. And it's like, oh, well, you think that's, that's the end of the show. He's shot, shot in the spine, and he's not going to become Oracle, so he can't be, become any other superhero. But he does, because he creates this suit, and he puts it on himself, and he not only can walk again, but he has, like, superpowers, and he goes around fighting crime, not in a particularly cool way. He shoots bad guys with darts that immobilize them, and they there's, like, a green bad special effect it's looking back maybe it's stupid but at the time it was awesome because look there's a superhero show on tv and also and you know i I, i'll just say it he's black and frankly uh even in today it seems like no one wants to give a black superhero their own movie without being like the supporting character or their own tv show without just being the supporting character and I thought that was awesome. I think Mantis was uh, was great. And as I say this, um, I'm, I'm looking it up right now. And, oh, look, it was produced by Sam Raimi, who went on to do other superhero things like Spider-Man. For the life of me, I cannot re- remember what Mantis stands for. Mantis, man- when I say Mantis, um, it, it's not about a guy who looks like a praying mantis. He looks like a dude in a suit. Um, it's, it's just all black. Um, but Mantis, has, it, it's, there's like, there's, there's, it stands for something. The M stands for something, and the A stands for something. I can't remember what it was, and this is embarrassing. So let's just, let's say let's say um, it stands for um, Mr. Anderson needs to ignite Scotland. Uh, so. Do you want to know what it stands for? I looked it up. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I insist we think of other things that it stands for um, right now on the spot. Um, Maybe, maybe Allison's needles touch infinite scrotums. Major Armstrong's nine-ton ivory sailboat. But it was great. It was a really cool show. Um, it ran for. Uh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page now, and yes, it does stand for something stupid. It's 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 like um, what 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 is it? Me- mechanically augmented neurotransmitter interception system? God, that sounds stupid. God, I like mine better. Um, maximum allies. No tickling iris, Steven. All right, so. <laughs> I could just let them in. do that for an hour. Absolutely none. Um, no, I'm done. I, I'm done. Um, but no, no, it was cool. Yeah, according to this, it ran for one season, like I said. Um, it only had 22 episodes. Uh, and it, of course it was on Fox. Fox loves creating science fiction uh, TV shows and then canceling them in the first season, Firefly. So, um, yeah, that is my example. And uh, I would love to hear some of your favorite shows that only lasted one or two seasons. Well, I, I, hearing you talk about the Mantis show um, reminded me of, of the old CBS Flash show. Oh, yeah. Actually, I really, because when I was a kid, I was like 10 years old when the Flash came out on CBS. I really, really liked it. You know, and um, it's like it had it had like a lot of really, really cool, cool people. in. I mean, people that I didn't necessarily know were cool um, at the time. But like, you know, Mark Hamill was in it. Jeffrey Combs was in it. Um, David Cassidy was in it. And Emmett Walsh was in it. Um, yeah, I, I, I like I remember it was. It was the first time where I was like, oh, my God, there's, like, a superhero TV show. And, like, a superhero I recognized, because kind of, like, up until that point in time, it seemed as though, like, the only superhero shows that that television messed around with were ones that they had created, um, which always goes well. Like, for example, The Mantis, or more recently, The Cape, I think it was called. Yeah. I I heard of that, but I didn't bother watching it because I just knew it was going to fail. Everybody, I think everybody knew that it was going to fail. Um, although it did serve as some really, really great fodder for some community jokes. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so so the Flash uh, back in 1990, I, I really liked that. But the shows that I that I really wanted to talk about, um, um, there was one called Werewolf that was like uh, again, uh, strangely enough, Fox. 
um, because that was like, I think it was 1987 that it started airing. Um, and it was, yeah, it was a, it was a show about goddamn werewolves. It was this like, it was a show about this guy whose best friend, like in the pilot episode, is all like, "You need to shoot me in the head with a silver bullet," and his buddy's like, "That's crazy, dude." He's like, "No, I'm a werewolf, really." And then, you know, he's like, okay, we're going to talk our way through this. It's going to be cool. And then the guy, like, transforms into a werewolf and, like, bites his friend. And then, like, you know, later the the main character, whose name was Eric, um, is like, oh, my God, I'm a werewolf. So then he, like, learns that the only way to cure himself of lycanthropy is to kill the originator of his bloodline, so, like, every episode, he, like, goes to a new town, because he's looking for this guy, you know, and, um, and it was sort of like, it was that kind of, like, proto, um, um, horror, supernatural kind of style TV show that, that, that became really popular in, like, you know, the late 90s, after, like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and things like that, and it, too, was only, like, it was, like, a one-season affair, you know, and it was, like, done, they just they let go of it, but um, but I remember I remember watching that. Um, oh my god! Now I'm remembering more. Oh oh, what was that called? Midnight Cafe. I used to watch a bunch of weird TV shows. Uh, no, okay, it wasn't Midnight Cafe. It was like it was it was this weird show about this this diner that would like pop up from place to place. Like Brigadoon. I'm um no. Oh, then no. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's all I know. It reminded me of Brigadoon. It's... No, no, it would like it would it would pop up from like in different towns, and it was like the people who were were in the diner were they were like dead, but they didn't know it, and it was like oh god, um, Nightmare Cafe. Nightmare Cafe. Nightmare Cafe. Yeah, it was this, it was this show about these, these two people, yeah, like, running, running this cafe, and, like, during the series, they discovered that they, like, died, but they, they were alive and in the cafe, and they couldn't, like, they could only leave the cafe under certain circumstances, and it was all about how they had to, like, change some things that happened in their past or in their lives or something like that, but people didn't recognize them, and Robert England was in it from, um, the, the, um, Nightmare on Elm Street series, um, I think he actually co-created the show. Um, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page right now. He didn't uh, co-create it, but Wes Craven co-created it. Okay, all right. That's that's why it's it's oh. it's sticking in my head like that. Oh my God, it only ran for six episodes. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a six episode run, like tiny, tiny. But it was also like it was also a weird, like strange kind of ooh, uh, a show, which I, I like. Most of the shows that, that that lasted only like one or two seasons were either like that. They were like horror or sci fi or something like that. Like um another another series that only lasted eight episodes, uh, on Fox as well was Kindred the Embraced. Um, do you guys do you guys know what I'm talking about? Kindred the Embraced? Does that ring any bells? You mentioned it to me uh, a little while ago and I, I just I can't remember it at all. It was it was based on the T or the the RPG the White Wolf tabletop RPG oh. a Vampire the Masquerade, where it's like you know the vamp there's these like ancient vampire families that are like living in modern day society and they don't like reveal themselves to mortals and it was this like it was this weird mixture of like um. Uh, a gangster show and also vampires. So it was, and uh, like almost all of the shows I'm talking about too, I think uh, starred um, what's his name, Brian, um, Brian Boitano. No, no, definitely not <laughs> Brian Boitano. No, not, not <laughs> Brian Dennehy either. <laughs> um. But, you know, like, everybody, everybody recognizes him. Um, Brian Thompson, Brian Thompson, that, like, that huge guy that gets roles in, like, every single sci-fi horror thing. He's Brian gonna... Erlacher. No, <laughs> Brian, said... Brian Thompson! <laughs> I'm just gonna name more Brian. I don't care that you already found the right name. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, and, um... But I mean, you know, if I had to, if I had to say my favorite, like, really limited run television shows, it's probably a toss up between Time Tracks, which I know you know, Leon. Oh yeah. 
I love that show. Time, Time Tracks was pretty awesome, um, which which was about a, a cop that got sent back to, like, modern day from the future. It was like a really pulpy um, uh, quantum leap, almost, you know? Yeah. Where it's like he goes back in time, but he's not jumping around. He just has to, like, bring criminals back to the present by shooting them with a garage door opener. Yeah, oh, yeah, and he, he, he could only go back to his regular time. Once he got all of them, because, yeah, which, which, which meant he never would, or else the series would end. But yeah, that that was uh... a. <laughs> oh, didn't he have a hologram? There was this woman. There was this woman who I think was like a, like a hologram who who helped him along the way. She was a hologram in the fr- in the future, but I think in the past she was only like a voice on his little garage door opener palm right. pilot thing. Right. I mean, it was supposed to be, like, it was supposed to be a really high-tech, like, laser gun time machine where it's, like, you know, it had, like, a kill and a stun setting, and then there was one that, like, would send someone back to the future, but it looked like a garage door opener. It looks, it looks pretty stupid. Even I, like, you know, I, it came out in, like, 93 or something. I was, like, a 13-year-old kid that loves sci-fi, and I was, like, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> um, it's a toss-up between that and a show called American Gothic. Oh. Uh, American Gothic was a a, a one season run uh, show on I think CBS um, that was like created by Sean Cassidy. Yeah, like the old teen like singer songwriter idol Sean Cassidy, brother of of David Cassidy. Um, and, and it was ex- executive produced by surprise surprise um, Sam Raimi. And it was just, it was just like this really off-putting, like, I think it was 1995 or 1994 or something like that, uh, this really off-putting, like, southern town in South Carolina where they never really tip their hand that anything, like, really, really surreal is going on, but you're pretty sure that the sheriff is the devil. Like he's, it was, it's, it's available on DVD. It's a one season, you know, I don't know if he can get it on Netflix or not, but it's like the guy is, um, the, the sheriff who's played by Gary Cole is just like, it's, it's one of the best roles I've ever seen on, on TV. The sheriff is like a murderer and a manipulator and like, he's just, he's, he's a mean son of a bitch. And it was a really, really, really good show. Uh, I, yeah, actually, talking about it now, I'm probably gonna have to say that that's probably my favorite, like, one run, one season run TV show, American Gothic. It was just, it was so weird and delightful and just, like, creepy. My favorite, uh, one run show is probably Firefly, but looking back, uh, further, uh, about, with a series that honestly didn't stand much of a chance in the first place, um, one of my other favorites would have to be The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Oh, yes. Sunday morning. Uh, I loved that show. I mean, it, it was, um, Bruce Campbell played, uh, the titular character. And what it was, when you wa- when you started watching it, you thought that this was just a cool action comedy western. And that alone would be fantastic. But at, I, I think shortly into the run, you started to realize that you're actually watching steampunk. You're act, there are actually science fiction elements in this. And at the time, I didn't know what steampunk was, so I thought that this was completely original and, 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 and that had like, never been done before. But uh, that was a great show. Um, it, it, I, mean, I mean, the thing with Fox, is, is we, we keep mentioning Fox here. That Fox, to their credit, took a lot of risks, especially in the early days where they were sort of the new kid on the block and they wanted to uh, compete with the, the big three. Um, but not to their credit, they didn't really stick with their ideas for very long. They, they cut them really quick when if they didn't perform, they had to go. Uh, so a lot of, um, let's say, good premises uh, had to disappear. And although um, I, I, I joke when I say Mantis was a great show, it was not. But uh, The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. really was a good show that if it had come on today, people would still say, hey, that was pretty good. Sucks that it was canceled. Um, Bruce Campbell is just Bruce Campbell's his way through the whole thing, and he's great uh, as usual. Um, so that would be definitely one of my uh, favorites. Austin, you've been surprisingly quiet. You grew up in a slightly different time than myself and Johnny. 
<laughs> um, as we mentioned in every episode, because it's a source of fun for us that Johnny and I are in our 30s and you're still uh, in your 20s. So why don't you tell us about some of the ones, uh, some short-lived shows that you liked, perhaps, when you were growing up? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't watch much TV growing up. I I talked about this recently, but I just didn't really like any TV shows until really recently. So God. I don't know how much... God I don't know. damn you, Austin. You I don't know how much I have to this. You didn't watch My So-Called Life and cry mm-hmm. as it ended on a cliffhanger. No. I, I mean, I'll, I'll throw my hat into the Firefly okay. discussion, but every, that's, that's so obvious. Everyone's going to say that. Um, I can't really think of anything else, guys. I'm sorry. I want everybody to watch American Gothic. That's your homework, gentlemen. I should. You know what show um, that I haven't seen? I think I only ran the two, ep- two seasons, so I guess this sort of counts. Uh, the show I have not seen that is surprising that I still haven't is Twin Peaks. I mean, I huge, I'm a huge. You just David, started that. Yeah, I'm a huge David Lynch fan in terms of his films. A lot, some of his movies are among my favorites ever. But I've never sat down and actually watched a full episode of Twin Peaks. I just I left Twin Peaks alone there because I just assumed that everybody's like, oh yeah, Twin Peaks. Yeah. yeah. It has two seasons according to Netflix. Right, right. It, 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 it does. Still. It does. Okay. Although I the second that season too. is the second season is truncated pretty quickly mm-hmm. because you learn you learn part way through who done it. And then, like, viewership plummeted. Yeah. Why, why would you stick around if you know the answer to the mystery? Because the characters are delightful and amazing. They did make, he, they did make a movie of it uh, later um, with, with more uh, background into it. Um, Twin Peaks, Firewalk Fire, with, Fire with, with Me. Well, yeah. Right. And it was a, it, but it was a prequel because, like, they couldn't free up some of the actors and even, like... You know, one of the major characters couldn't make the movie, so they had to put somebody else in for her. So it's like, and because like because the series is a mystery, you learn about like all this stuff that happened mm. to to the, the the character who gets gets murdered um, prior to the beginning of the first episode, uh, most famously known as Laura Palmer. And so like watching the movie, you're like, yeah, I remember when they discovered that this happened to Laura Palmer. Yeah, I remember when this. Um, they discovered this happened to Laura Palmer. But there's a really, really awesome, awesome cameo by Kiefer Sutherland and Chris Isaac, as well as David Bowie. David Bowie's cameo is phenomenal. Wait, speaking, yeah. of, David, speaking of David Bowie, I have something to add to this conversation. There was a show, I think it was only one season, I watched it because of the name. It was called Life on Mars. Do you guys know the show? Oh, yeah. I Except heard of you're it. talking about the American one, aren't you? I yeah, Harvey Keitel was in it. Oh God! It's not good, but I remember like being interested in it and being like, "Oh, this might go somewhere eventually," and then it was just gone. I take it the British one was better. The British one is is way better because they decide to end it in not the lowest common denominator sense. Where like the American show is like, oh, you know, everybody's like. Astronauts. I'm totally, I'm totally blowing this. All right. I don't care if you haven't seen the American life on Mars. But the way the story of the show goes is that a cop in present day gets into an accident and he wakes up and it's like 1973. Which, I mean, the name of the original show was based around the David Bowie song Life on Mars. I think that came out in 1973. Because he gets into the accident and that's playing on the car stereo, and when he passes out, he like he wakes up and the car stereo is still playing it. Only it's like new in 1973, uh, and and so the, the the clinch of the story is that it's like oh you know like am I in a coma and just dreaming that I'm in 1973? Am I a time traveler? Have I come back in time from the future to 1973 somehow, or am I fucking crazy and it's been 1973 all this time and I just think it's like 2012 or something. And that's that's great. Only what the American show decided to do was make them astronauts who were flying to Mars and had a dream. So he's an astronaut who dreams he's a cop who gets into an accident and wakes up in 1973. Fuck you, American television. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's one one layer too far. The British the British show um very specifically avoids that end. Um it was not even like it not even 
hinted, not even suggested. There wasn't even, like, a bit in the series where you're like, oh, well, I guess it could have gone this way. No, no, no. Johnny's rage sustains me. Yeah. <laughs> they had a good cast. The American show did have a good cast. I'll give it that. Yeah, I, I pretty much only watched it because Harvey Keitel is in it. Uh, but but the uh, I, I, the British one the British one is is way better. It's a limit. It's a limited run as well. It's only like two series, so it's like you know twenty episodes or something like that. But that's common for the BBC. Yeah, you know they don't the with the exception of a, a, a particularly famous unnamed doctor, um, they have a tendency to like let their good ideas expire when they deserve to be expired. So. Yeah, I, I was checking out the House of Cards on Netflix, the original. It they. It it takes Kevin Spacey like twenty something episodes to get to where like it was the fourth episode of the British series. Yeah. Like the original Francis was like much quicker on these plans. It's interesting. So you guys should watch it, that. It's really good. I well I've seen I've seen sorry, no. You're talking about House of Cards. I intend on watching House of Cards. I can't. I, I tried watching um the American version of uh, House of Cards. God, how do I, how do I say this in a way that isn't entirely dirty? Um, nah, let's just do it anyway. Um, <laughs> he's performing a sexual act on 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 a much much younger woman. Wow. I know exactly wow. what episode you're talking wow. about. Well, she is on the phone with her father, and the guy, being Kevin Spacey, really wants her to call him dad. And I I just kind of threw up my hands, like, nope. Too gross, even for me. Um, I can't watch this show. Um, I tried watching another episode later. And I turned to my wife, and I'm like, who am I supposed to root for in this show? <laughs> who's, like, who's, like, the good guy? Because I, I can watch Game of Thrones, and, you know, almost everyone has a kind of shade of gray. But And I, 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 I can live with that kind of ambiguity. I think that gives us a lot of layers. But when I, what, of little I've seen of House of Cards, almost everyone's awful. I can't... The way I... <laughs> The way I treat House of Cards is like a horror series. It's like Kevin Spacey is the monster, and he's just picking everyone off. You're not there to root for anyone. You're just to watch. You're just there to see the carnage. Mm. See, I like horror movies where I I actually like the cast of characters, and I had their suspense because I want them to survive. The worst horror movies are the ones where you're hoping for them to. <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's 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 the modern horror movie, the the final destination kind of movie where you're just waiting for them to be killed in elaborate ways. One more the the last one I want to add was a show called The Jim Henson Hour. Oh, is it the Mupp- is it the Muppets guy? No, yeah, well it is the Muppets guy, but the thing is that the Jim Henson Hour was a really, really short run T V show. It only got about a dozen episodes or something like that. Um <clears throat> that that NBC aired. In 1989, and it was like it, it was like an almost like an adult styled Muppet show. It was kind of like a variety show where like every episode would have a uh, you know like a, a particular story or just a couple of of things that they would that that they would show, and it was like they would use it to to showcase like all their new uh, puppet creations and show creations and things like that. But they would tell like fairy tales and things like that they were always just like a little dark like i remember i remember there was this there was this one which was about a soldier who um it's like taken from an old folk tale because i've read it since then who like you know on his way home from the war or something like that gives away like the last like food that he has and they give him these magic things back, right? And like one of them is a is a, a bag where it's like, yeah, you can trap anything in this bag. And he uses all these magic things that he gets to wind up becoming like the, the king of this or like the baron of this, you know, part of the land or something like that. And just as he's about to die, he traps death in this bag. And it, I mean, you haven't seen like Freaky until you've seen the Jim Henson Workshop. Do up a Muppet of Death. Well, if that is it, everybody, I guess uh, it is time for us to go. So, with that, with that being said, um, I, I'm Leon Thomas, and you guys are you guys. We are. Um, stay on the air. I don't know. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. M- Muppet of Death. <laughs>